Hey y'all, we're doing a little something different again. It's been a number of months since we did our update regarding the garden in the spring. So I figured we are deep into summer. Let's take a quick look at where things are. We've got quite a bit of random growth from our different items. We've got carrots, we've got some quinoa, we've got parsley. We have some eh, peppers that aren't doing fantastic, but you know, we'll live. I really keep hoping that this broccoli that we planted kind of late in the spring will eventually actually broccoli instead of just going straight to bolting and you know, putting out flowers. We'll see. So far, obviously we can see it's made leaves. <laughs> That's about it. Um, we have more in here, some other peppers this i think is our marjoram is that what this goodness it's it's obviously loving where it's at because it's taken over it it has gone to flower i don't mind anything about that but that's where we are there our strawberries are doing fantastic we've got a bunch that are actually ready for harvest oh, this one needs a little bit more time so does this but overall, they're doing great. Um, this is a straw flower that I planted in here. Probably not the best place to plant the straw flower because of how big it gets. But, you know, you live and you learn. That's the, the whole thing about gardening. It's a process. Coming over to the berry section, our raspberries are looking terrible. Um, I don't know if the fall ones in the way back back there are going to come back next year. I'm hopeful. We, we have some okay movement on just the uh, raspberry shortcake. I think for the most part they're not looking great because we actually had to pick them up off the ground and put them on the stone circles because they were putting their roots down into the ground and we didn't want that these are supposed to be purely container we do not want them spreading and growing etc etc so now by putting them on the circle um, if the roots start to grow larger they will self terminate when they uh, hit oxygen um, our lavenders looking beautiful we have our blueberries coming in. We still have a little bit of blueberries that are harvestable on our Big Daddy. Um, but for the most part, blueberry season is essentially over. Uh, we'll come out there and we probably won't do any big harvest. It'll be more. I'm going to grab a handful to put on my cereal. Um, over on this one, we can see that we've got some flowers up top, a little bit of basil. We've got our cucumbers that are doing okay. Not, not anything spectacular, but they're doing okay. Um, we've got beans coming in, looking really nice. Some of our herbs are going crazy. We've got some flowers. We've got a lot of bean plants on here. So, you know, after about a week, week and a half, maybe even two weeks, we tend to have enough to put out on and grill up. So those are looking great. Ooh, watch out for the bees. As you can see, the mint is just all over the place. It should not be out here, but it's hard to begrudge it when the bees love it so much once it starts to flower. Um, it does make navigating the garden a little bit of a pain, though. Okay, over here, this is um, some of our overflow tomatoes. So, but they're looking really good. I wish they would just start to ripen. Um, we have some aster that is finally starting to grow. And I sprinkled in some cilantro in here with the hopes that by the time it actually grows up and can be usable, that we'll have tomatoes and peppers so that Mr. M can do his salsa. Um, this thing's in the way. We're going to take this soil, which we used in some of the planters in the containers because we harvested our potatoes. We harvested our onions. If you were 
with us and watched our previous video this all had onions in it this had onions in it as well those all had onions we harvested all those we'll go into a quick shot of what that harvest looks like give me just one second okay so here is our onion harvest we harvested 66 onions they have been put out to dry and cure um, most of them came out really well nice and big but we did have some that just didn't quite get to where they needed to be so the plan for these is I have some old nylons that my grandma gave us a long time ago specifically for these kinds of purposes wrap the onions in and then you can kind of hang them and, and they'll stay good the other thing you can do is put them in a brown paper bag and just put them somewhere that's cool and dark um, so that they maintain for the long you know long-term usage we did run into some issues last year doing that we put them under the house where the furnace is we have like a little it's not quite a crawl space because you can climb down a, a little step laddery thing to get in there and you can stand up straight in a very small section of it um, but we put it down there unfortunately there is in the winter a little bit of moisture and it got to the bag and so we ended up with a bunch of rotting onions we want to avoid that this year though so we'll have to figure out exactly what we're going to do we need to do that soon because as you can see for the most part this is very very nicely dried we've got nice paper that is formed so we'll need to come and trim up some of the um, roots off of these trim off you know, a good portion of the stem stuff and then find a way to preserve those so that we have them for the long haul. The smaller, less developed ones, we are going to do what we have planned. Ooh. Well, Mr. M's going to get that because that means it's fallen into spider land and I ain't getting it. Um, <laughs> what we're going to do is probably grind them up into sort of a paste put them on a silicone sheet into the dehydrator dehydrate the heck out of them until it becomes completely dry and then grind it up and make onion powder we're doing the same thing with our garlic because our garlic harvest was incredibly lackluster we had a couple where the um, heads might be mostly usable we'll We'll be checking those out. Um, I plan on doing a peeling just where I'm sitting and I'm going to peel garlic until my fingers fall off. Um, if we have viable, good sized cloves, then we'll just go and vacuum seal those ones as whole and put them in the freezer. But the rest, we're going to, again, we're going to put them in a food processor, grind it up into kind of a paste, spread it out onto a silicone sheet, put it in the dehydrator. Make sure we get all of the moisture out, then put them into a spice grinder or into um, our high-powered um, blender and make um, garlic powder. So back to the garden. Right. So peppers are coming along. Looking pretty nice. A lot of them were just waiting for them to change colors. Look at these cubanelles. Isn't that amazing sized? Mr. M really likes these ones. These are the, um, I think San, no, Carmen's, the Carmen Italians, but he wants them to get red. So that's what, why they're still on the vine. Um, like I said, this we are gonna go and put into the bed over there bring the soil level up we'll need to amend it a little bit because it has already had um, stuff coming through it here's some more of the cubanelles um, this is pineapple tomato this is the first year that we have grown this but look at that beautiful I really want to get that to to ripen Got our pretty, um, oh gosh, I can't even remember what the name of these are. Uh, 
have it right over here. Zinnias, duh, oh my gosh. So, nice pretty zinnias. I should probably head these and see if that'll continue the growth, but um, we've got quite a few. These are Anan Noirs tomatoes. Really, really big. A little bit, uh, there might be some blossom end rot on the bottom of that. I can't quite tell. Uh, we also have some of these. Right, I can't see that. Right here. I'm not sure if those are cream sausage tomatoes. I'm trying to see if there's a little tag but I'm not seeing one it could be a Roma or something like that here's some more zinnias we've got carrots still this is from the spring planting um, we've already harvested a bunch we're probably gonna harvest some more soon I want to get in and do another re-sowing so that we have some for the fall we harvested mr. M's cabbages out of here He's made, or he's in the process of fermenting some sauerkraut, and he's also made two batches of coleslaw so far. We have two new cabbages, different variety than we did this spring, ready to go. I tried planting um, our purple cauliflower again. So far it hasn't come up. That area I'm prepping to reseed again and hopefully we'll have some cauliflower for the winter, fall, winter. Um, these are daikon radishes, which Mr. M likes to make some kind of concoction with. So those are coming along. We did obviously get all of the um, peas out. And here we have a bunch of stuff for butterflies. Um, the ones that the monarchs like, I can't remember the name of it at the moment. We have some teddy bear, some flowers that are coming in here. This thing is, a, this is the first year I've ever grown it. It's really, really pretty. Um, it's some kind of amaranth. What is it called? It's called Coral Fountain Amaranth. Super neat. And then these are stock. They're finally starting to make some progress to, to grow some flowers. Ooh, watch out. No, cabbage moth, get out of there. This is a white cabbage, a white cauliflower that was from the spring. I don't know if it's gonna become anything. It's taken a long time to get to where it is. And Oh yeah, this is milkweed. That's what that is. Um, this is our weed patch. Not that kind of weed. And then this is our dedicated tomato section where we've got anans, some more Anans Noir here. There's a lot of green, a lot of green tomatoes. We've got some marigolds. This is another pineapple tomato. Look at the size of that thing. More marigolds. This is San Marzano. They're not super big and, and thick like I would normally expect for the Marzanos. Um, this one is also San Marzano, but we can see here inconsistent watering. We're getting blossom end rot, so I don't know how successful those are going to be. Um, this uh, Kilimanjaro white marigold is struggling to get some sun. We also have another milkweed over here that's trying. All down here, we had some beans. It was a poor design choice on my part. I should have known that the tomatoes were absolutely going to crowd them out so we ended up pulling them out maybe a week and a half ago at, at most um what is this this is an italian roma again we got to keep an eye out for blossom end rot so far those look pretty good 
we did have a cream sausage tomato that was here. I ended up pulling it out. It was very, very lackluster. Um, it just wasn't worth the effort of having it. These are Storybrook um, heart tomatoes. They're a dwarf tomato. Or, is that right? Or are these the Russian swirl? Um, yeah, these are the Storybrook heart. They're supposed to kind of be heart shaped. So. Then we've got another one right here. Another of that same tomato variety. We've got some more marigolds. And then we have a Russian, oops, I'm gonna fall over into this thing. Uh, a Russian swirl right here, which is also another of the dwarf tomatoes, which basically it just means that the plant itself is gonna be small but you're gonna get full-size tomatoes. And the second Russian swirl right here. I've been waiting for this penistemon to actually put out flowers since we planted it back in uh, March. Nothing so far. And there's another one of those somewhere in the garden. We'll see if it ever actually becomes anything. But, yeah, this one is a, no, those are the carrots. What the heck is this? Ooh, it feels like, kind of like papery. What the heck is this? This one took forever to actually grow too, and it looks very much like a weed when it's first growing and so luckily I had at one point a little thing <laughs> saying like oh what is that we've got a bunch of millipedes in there I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing I'm just gonna ignore it because that's what I like to do with my problems is ignore them <laughs> all right well I can't find where the heck the little do oh there it is Tatis cotton candy blend. That's what these are. So now you know. Then over here, some more flowers. Beautiful straw flower. We've got a yarrow. We have celosia. Oh, I've wanted this to grow so bad. I'm so excited about that. Um, we've got some alyssum. So that's cool. We've got. What is this? This one came from the from the store it's aroma it's not doing great probably because it's in this pot and so it's really easy for nutrients to um, fall out of it you know drain out we do need to give it some fertilizer this gets musk melon so we've got a lot of flowers and I've seen the bees over here so I'm hoping that it means oh, see look at that and it means we'll actually get some melons off of this. And then some more flowers, more stock, um, snapdragons. And I believe that this is actually a radish. So there we go. That is our tour of the garden during the very hottest part of the day. Uh, I hope it was an interesting look into something in our lives outside of the budget and the dollars and cents of what we're trying to do to get out of debt all right well as always if you have anything uh, that you want to ask if you have any feedback suggestions questions things like that please note those down below in the comment section and we'll see you in the next one have a marvelous weekend